G'day all, welcome. Just getting the finishing touches put on the show. Had a good little run through before. Seemed like it went well. G'day Stuart. Howdy Craig. Hi Tom. Welcome Glenn. Good to see you in the house, Guy. Robert, welcome. Susan, Trevor. We're just getting the final touches put onto it now. How are you going, Darren? Final touches are coming along. We're just uh, getting the last things in order. We should be uh, ready in a minute or so. Been a big, big week. Hi, Luke. How you doing? G'day, Kim. Walter, welcome. Jeff. Sandy, John, Gary. There's lots and lots uh, coming on. We're not far off a start here. Very, very busy few weeks for the team at uh, Miner's Den. Good to see you, Ian. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, Paul. Hi, Dion. Chris, Greg. There's so many names uh, coming through here. It's uh, great to see everyone on board. Peter, Jenko's Gold's here also. Bill. Kylie, Damien, looking forward to another big, big, big show tonight. Hello, Dom, Peter, Dawson, Digging Holes, welcome, Josh, Ben, lots and lots of people coming on, lots of great information for you for this evening. Haven't got long to go, just uh, make sure everything's... Uh, Absolutely spot on, and hopefully it's all going to flow well. Hi, Karen. I think we're just about ready to go. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks and super deals for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. In this episode, we're going to check out the prospecting and treasure hunting news from all around Australia. We'll learn how to look after your gear with a tech tip from Nathan. Uh, we're going to continue our new segment, What Have I Found with the Coffee Bush Kid? And of course, I'll answer your questions live and we'll give away some fantastic kit to help you in the great outdoors. I'm Gold Digger Dave, let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep, couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Well, during the month of uh, April, Miners Den attended a number of outdoor events and had our usual raffle for a Mine Lab Go Find 44. So look, let's take a look first up at some of the winners from these raffles. So there was the Victorian Caravan and Camping Super Show raffle, and the winner there, well, congratulations, Noah Martin. Uh, Noah dropped in, dropped a ticket in at our stand, and you've scored yourself a Mine Lab Go Find 44 metal detector. Now, we also had on the Australian Gold Prospectors Expo raffle, and uh, we have another winner there. This time it was Neil. Dunbar, congratulations Neil, you've won yourself a GoFind 44, a Mine Lab metal detective, good, great for hunting for the coins and relics. Look, the last event that we had a raffle running at in the last month or so was the New South Wales Caravan and Camping Super Show, and look, we have a winner there also, and it's congratulations this time to Richard Warburton. Now look, uh, you should have all been contacted by now, if you haven't, there should be an email sitting there for you, uh, possibly a message uh, from Corey. If you haven't heard from us, guys, Get in contact with us and we'll let you know um, uh, what you need to do and we'll get the prize out to you. So look, thanks again for everybody who uh, put their entries in and well done to the winners. 
Moving right along, well, we're going straight into the gold price here, and the, the gold price has, has dipped slightly from uh, where it was coming in uh, last week. It was just under 2,650 per troy ounce, uh, after briefly peaking at 2,690 an ounce just a few days earlier. Now, I think currently it's um, dropped back a little bit again, but the price is seeing a few ups and downs, which can be expected. But overall, it's still moving in the right directions and the trend is good in these unpredictable times. Now, next up uh, in our news, we've got the Mine Lab certified training. So this is an exclusive to Miners Den. Um, we've got our next lot of training sessions that are now being organised for those who've purchased an SDC 2300, a GPX 6000 or the Mighty 5000. If you've got a 7,000 from uh, a Miner's Den a Mine Lab metal detector superstore, then uh, these sessions have been specifically designed for you to get you up and running on your new Mine Lab metal detector. Each session is dedicated to one specific model, so you won't find out that you've got a guy out there with uh, three or four different models and different groups trying to learn. It's just dedicated to the machine that you've bought, uh, and you'll be guided by our experienced prospectors who've used all of these machines, and of course, we only ever run small group sessions for our training sessions. So uh, the Victorian sessions are on in Bendigo and we've got following uh, dates available now. So the next lot are up on the 2300 training. We're doing that between 9am and 12pm on Saturday the 14th of May. Uh, the GPZ 7000 training happens that afternoon between 1 and 4. Again, that's the 14th of May. Uh, GPX 6000 training, okay, you score that uh, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. Uh, on the Sunday, and we have slotted in now a session for the GPX 5000 training, so we had enough uh, people who are interested. 5000 training is going to be a little less frequent than what we've been doing previously. There's not as much demand for that kind of training at the moment, so after this session, it may be a two or three month break before we run another one for the 5000. If you've bought a 5000 from us and you're wanting some training, get in on this session, we'll make sure you get trained up and uh, of course if you've bought through Miners Den uh, Metal Detector Superstores then this training's free. The next sessions are in New South Wales, we've had to add in further sessions into Waddle Flat, there's a lack of training in New South Wales, uh, we've uh, solved that problem again as uh, the state's or New South Wales leading Mine Lab uh, outlet, uh, you can call a store and book in for the following session. So, We've got the 2300 training at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's on the 25th of June, the Saturday. The 7000 training is happening between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. And that's on the 25th of June, Saturday also. If you've got a 6000, you bought it and you want to do some training with us in Model Flat, uh, then uh, we have 6000 training on 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. on Sunday, the 26th of June. Now, look, if you didn't purchase uh, through a Miner's Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstore, then you can still take advantage of the only Mine Lab certified training courses uh, for a small fee. Uh, your customers can take you, we'll take you out uh, even if you're bought elsewhere and you'll get the chance to get some real training, one-on-one -on -one machine training so that you're not getting confused with every different uh, setting from everyone else's machines. The Mine Lab experts, Miners Den Australia. Sales, service and training. Well, lots and lots of news happening this week uh, to continue uh, along our theme and our trend of uh, uh, Australia's largest supporter of outdoor shows. Miners Den this weekend is heading off to Rockarama in Palmer, South Australia. Now, the Miners Den team, uh, your local events team, are heading out there. Um, they're going to be there all weekend, so they'll be there on the Saturday and the Sunday. As usual, we'll have the full range of Mine Lab metal detectors on display. And the event, again, is being well supported by the Mine Lab crew. Now, Mine Lab are the major sponsors to this event. So, look, be sure to drop in and get the best advice on the range of Mine Lab metal detectors. Enter our raffle, and you may be the lucky winner of a GoFind 44. Heaps of prizes, and uh, the detecting uh, championships are on on the Sunday. So that's well worth attending. And uh, Diane, I know from Miners Den is going to be out there. I know uh, Matt from uh, Mine Lab. Uh, of course, you're going to find, I think, uh, Steve is heading out. And I've also got Peter Gardner, which uh, many of you will know from our training sessions over there, is coming out with this for the weekend. So big thank you to all those guys. Hope you have a fantastic weekend and it stays dry. 
Now the demo days, uh, uh, well last weekend saw another range of the, another run of the Mine Lab uh, Miner's Den Metal Detector Demo Days. Uh, now look, these are our regular demo days and they're an exclusive to Miner's Den. And what a turnout we had. We didn't do a garage sale or anything like that. We just gave you the best advice at those sessions on uh, what machine or what mine lab machine will be most suited for yourselves. All stores events were well attended and people who uh, attended did learn a lot from the Miners Den team. Our experienced factory trained staff were able to give participants the correct information on the range of mine lab machines and that started many people off on a rewarding hobby. Those who headed back to the store afterwards were also able to enjoy a sausage from the barbecue while I had an informal chat with the mine lab experts. Um, as I said, many people have got started on a fantastic hobby just from attending our exclusive Mine Lab Metal Detector Demo Days. Now look, the next Demo Days are scheduled uh, for your local Miner's Den Metal Detector Superstore. So they're going to come up on Saturday, the 4th of June. Now look, they're at all stores. So they're at Penrith in New South Wales. Uh, we've got them in uh, Bendigo in Central Victoria, Mitcham in Melbourne, and of course we're out at Hill at Mile End South now in uh, Adelaide or South Australia. Look, so to learn more about this uh, hobby, uh, or what can be a very rewarding gold prospecting or treasure hunting hobby, be sure to call your local store and the team will get you booked in. We just need to know numbers that are coming along to make sure we've got enough sausage and stuff there for your people. Uh, and once again, uh, if you get along to one of these days, you'll be sure to start your recreational fossicking hobby off on the right foot. Now, it's uh, time this week to have a look at this week's viewer giveaway. And uh, look, once again, the viewer giveaway, it's an absolute ripper this week. Australia's most informative live stream always has the best giveaways for our lucky live viewers. And look, this week's uh, no exception. Uh, I'm going to throw in a mini panning kit and a bag of Gold Digger Day's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Now look, to be in the running, all you need to do, post a comment ask a question or suggest a new segment that we may bring in a future episode of the Mind Lab show. We'll take a really good look at uh, in-depth look at Australia's richest pay dirt a little later in the show in our product spotlight. Like I've always been telling you, Gold Digger Day's Gourmet Pay Dirt. It's no ordinary gravel. Good luck and happy prospecting. Now we're back this week uh, with another tech tip from uh, our resident uh, repair expert, Nathan. We can catch him now where he's going to replace the hand grip and green button on a GPX series metal detector. G'day, I'm Nathan from Miners Den Service Centre here in Bendigo and tonight's tech tip for the Mine Lab show is how to replace a hand grip and the green button, the ground balance button on a GPX 4000, 4500 and 5000. So the first thing you want to do is get this little bit of plastic bit on the arm rest here and push him off. There we go, it's quite easy this time, but sometimes they can be quite difficult. And then you want to get the hand grip off, like so. It wasn't too hard, but sometimes they can be quite difficult. So like that, with a new hand grip, you can just push it on over the top and then put this back on over the top again. So, but since we're going to replace the green button as well, we'll also do that. So unplug it out of the detector under the green cable, with the cable for it, and then you'll want to push it up. You may have to get a little flathead screwdriver and just try and pry them up just a little bit, like so, and then pull it out like so. So we'll get rid of him. We'll get this other one that I've got, and we'll just feed it back the same way. So try and take note of the way that it came out of, and then push the new one in like so. Get that like that. And then you'll want to put the new uh, hand grip over the top just to keep the cable in place like that plug the uh, coil cable in uh, hand the um, ground balance cable into the detector just where it goes in the smart point socket and then you'll want to push the little strap here in the plastic Bit over the top. Sometimes again, it can be quite hard. Oh, that one was quite easy. All right. Well, that's how you replace a green button, ground balance button, and a hand grip on a GPX 4000, 4500, and 5000. And this has been a tech tip for the MyLab show.
Now, look, I was just uh, looking in the feed there, guys, and I saw there was a question coming up about whether we sell uh, second-hand detectors in Melbourne as well as our Bendigo store. Um, I just want to clear up, uh, Bendigo store has uh, our second-hand detectors, um, and there we come up to Bendigo because we test them up here, and that's where Nathan, our tech, is. However, all of the detectors are listed on our um, website, so the second-hand detectors are continually listed up on our second-hand detectors page. They all come with warranties. They've all been checked out by uh, our factory trained technician, Nathan, and uh, that's why you know whether the machine's been dropped or whether it's been in water. They all come with warranty, and of course, Miner's Den is Australia's leading outlet for the Mine Lab range of products. Stand by every second hand metal detector that we sell. So uh, they're not in every store, they're kept up in Bendigo, but they are available to view online. Uh, on minersden.com.au. So uh, thanks for the question, guys. I just saw that one while we're having a bit of a break there. We're going to head straight in now to our uh, uh, gold story. So first up, we've got a fantastic discovery by one of our Victorian customers who found this 620 gram specimen using a secondhand 3500 he bought from a Miners Den Mine Lab metal detector, Super Snore. The finder tells us he found this at a depth of around about 80 inches. Now apparently there's been an SG done on this, so the SG test tells us that the gold content of the specimen comes in at about 449.2 grams. What an exciting find, one no doubt all of us will dream about when we're heading out for our next gold prospecting adventure. Now, the second story uh, may not be quite as exciting, but a man was found with almost a kilogram of gold up his bottom after acting suspiciously at an airport in India. The passenger had arrived on an Air Arabia flight to the city of Jaipur on Friday and officials claimed that he was looking suspicious from his mannerisms. The airport confirmed a personal search was carried out and claimed that three transparent polyurethane capsules wrapped in white plastic were concealed up the man's bum. Inside were small metal granules made up of almost pure gold worth 76,000 Australian dollars. Now look, thankfully we have no photo to show you of this story. Sounds a little painful to me. I don't know why we didn't just take it in my pocket. But anyway, uh, let's move right along now. Uh, we're now looking uh, with the gold prospecting season well underway. And many people have been heading into the Miner's Den metal detector superstores to grab themselves a super deal on their preferred mine lab detector. Okay, this month's offers again save you a bundle on the gear that goes with the GPX 6000, the SDC 2300 and the GPZ 7000. For $1 extra, Miner's Den Metal Detector Super Stores are throwing in a MyLab carry bag, a spare battery, a GP and a GPX 6000 guide arm with every 6000 sold in April or while stocks last. So that's $1 extra, you get about 430 440 bucks worth of extras for one buck. Great deal, only eight grand. Smashing it again, won't find a deal like this anywhere in Australia. If you're looking at the SDC 2300, then we've had the best deal ever last month. But uh, at the moment, my lab have been very, very generous, and our standard price now of $4,050. Uh, has the following added inclusion. So Miner's Den are throwing in a Miner's Den patch lead. Uh, we're also throwing in the Mine Lab Pro Swing 45 harness. We're throwing in a Miner's Den control box cover. And uh, this month, though, and while stocks last, Mine Lab are also throwing in the ProSonic wireless audio unit. Now this unit's valued at around about 400 bucks, and it is a boosted audio system that has wireless technology in it with no delay and is proving an absolute absolute hit when you're running it on the 7000. The unit also has cables and things if you have other machines so you can run it on to a 5000 or you can even run it on to some of the coin and relic machines as well. That is a fantastic offer. I'm sure that's likely to sell out before the end of May. The GPZ 7000 is also on special this month with the miners then uh, throwing in a mine lab metal detecting superstore carry bag. Well, I've loaded it up. It's not actually a mine lab metal detector superstore carry bag. It's a mine lab carry bag. Of course, a spare battery, 
uh, we've thrown in a pick holder and you're going to score a spare 14 inch skid plate. So if you want one coil with your machine, that's 9799. If you go with the two coils, you save about 495 bucks on that second coil. You'll still get all the goodies and 10,799 will get you sorted. Now look, whichever world beating MindLab metal detector you choose, you will always get the best deal at a MindLab Miners Den Metal Detector Superstore. Strictly limited numbers, guys. First in breast dressed, no lay buys or rain checks on these offers. Look, uh, I've been travelling a fair bit and uh, we filmed this third part of uh, my coin and treasure hunting adventures uh, while well, detecting with Dave and the Coffee Bush Kid a little while ago. So keep a look out on, uh, for the extended version on our YouTube channel. It should go up in the next few days. But let's have a look now at part three of Detecting with Dave and the Coffee Bush Kid. Hey, I got gold fever and you wouldn't believe it I'm out chasing gold and I don't want to leave it This gold detector has got me on the run All around Australia it's got me roaming I find a piece of two Well, we've been out hunting some goldies on our last trek out with the uh, Equinox 800s, our Mine Lab gear uh, Absolutely smashed it as you will have seen in that clip we now moved on to a place where I've got a suspicion that it could be a little bit older and I'm going to have to readjust my program just to get some targets coming through. And you need to do that a little bit, don't you, the Coffee Push Kid, uh, when we are moving into old sites, a wider program tends to be better? You have to be adjustable to the situation, whether it be increasing your sensitivity, decreasing your sensitivity, your recovery speed, or in fact, what you are notching out. That's right, so I'll change my notching now. I'm going to notch out everything up to about 15 and leave all the rest open. If it is an old site, you just never know what you can uncover. You'll often hear though, as you will know, that a lot of people say, oh, I notched to 15. The reason we notch to that magic 15 number is that it's a half sovereign signal. Half sovereigns for 15, 18 for full sovereigns. And in an old site like this, you don't want to leave one of those behind. Absolutely not. Let's uh, get our machines on and go and see if we can uh, do a repeat of what happened when we were looking for the goldies. I got a really nice 24, 26 signal. It could have been a bottle cap, but sometimes you just get that feeling that, oh, you know, I've really got to dig it. Well, what we've got is a pulley. This is, in fact, if we clean this out a little bit better for you, this is a little rope pulley. I think it's a bit small for a window, but it would have been of something like that, because what I want to show you is in between the groove there, there are little ridges, and that was for gripping the looped rope that went through it. So these are all brass, but they've also got a bit of a steel center in them, which can throw you off a little bit. But, you know, realistically, that's a really nice little rally. They're always good to find. They're always a thumping signal. And we found it in a spot where we didn't know anything about. So we're riding a winner already. All right, I've got a bit of a signal here. It sounds fairly close to the surface. It's got a fairly high and it's fairly stable in around my 27, 26 there. Come back there. Has to be having a look at it. Nice clear signal. I'm more used to hunting the goldies with this machine, but let's see what we've got down here. And here it's a nice solid sound straight off. Like I said, it was shallow. Going to come back a little bit with my screwdriver here. Don't want to damage anything. Just gradually lift this up just in case there's something in there. Okay, let's have a look what I pulled out here. This looks like an old Nokia mobile phone battery. Now it's given off a good sound probably because of the brass that's up on the top here possibly. Uh, certainly uh, sounded off well and recovered by Gold Digger Dave while he's out in Bendigo using the Equinox 800. Well I've come to the edge of this site because it looks a little bit more scraped than I would like. And you can see this little embankment and it goes up onto what I would call reasonably natural. And 
We also have a line of trees, so that denotes potentially a fence line. But what I do have here, as I was going up, is this beautiful little signal. And that's coming in 32, 34, 31. It's just the sort of thing that you can't leave in the ground. It could be spectacular rubbish. It could be silver or a penny. And it's just in that area there. So we are gonna give that a good old dig. I can get down deep in that one, which is good. We are still down deep. So I'll come at it from this side. Oh, there we go, we've got something steel. Oh, ha, 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 ha. There we go. I'll show you that side, the unscraped side. That was a padlock. No wonder it gave us such a bloody good signal. They are a big thing. Anyway, we'll keep going. Another fantastic uh, time out there with the Coffee Boys Kid. Uh, we're going to do a few more of those in the next few weeks. Uh, really, really good fun, and uh, I'm sure we're going to find some more relics and things at some of the sites we've got coming up on future episodes of the Mind Lab Show. We'll look, another month has come and gone, and we have another bunch of winners who purchased Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. And, of course, if you've uh, had the chance of striking it rich with one of our mini patches, all those who pan the dirt off should recover some colour, and possibly they're going to also recover a redeemable collectible token. So, look, uh, this time uh, it's time to congratulate Mick Reedy, this month's winner of our Pay Dirt photo competition. We have a Miner's Den gift voucher on its way to the value of 50 bucks. Now look, the uh, new competition has started for the month of May, so be sure to get panning and join in uh, as many people have done, uh, and they've done very well, from Australia's richest pay dirt, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. It's no ordinary gravel. So look, be sure to make sure you put your photo up on our pin post on the Facebook page. That's how you get to uh, win a $50 gift voucher. Of course, uh, you not only get the gold and the possibility of a mini patch, but you'll also get the um, uh, token possibly in there that you can redeem or collect. And uh, the $50 voucher is just another way you can be a winner with Australia's richest pay dirt. Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. I'm going to say it again. It's no ordinary gravel. Now, look, next week, uh, uh, next we have up, sorry, this week's coin and treasure news. There's a couple of great stories come in this time. Um, story one was about some builders uh, working on a construction site in Hengrove, Bristol, where they were surprised uh, while preparing groundwork to uncover a hoard of Roman coins. Further careful excavation and metal detector survey recovered a total of 309 bronze and silver bronzed coins alongside a copper alloy scale pan lid and uh, some greyware pottery container. Uh, after an archaeological investigation, it was found that Hengrove Hoard is an unusual case of coins from the mid 4th century and includes a significant number of coins struck by the usurpers Magnetius and uh, Decentius. So I think I've got those names right. They uh, ruled the western provinces of the Roman Empire between AD 350 and AD 53. Given the size and age of the hoard, it has been declared a treasure and will be donated to the Bristol Museums, Galleries and Archives. So, the next story is also a hoard, but this time it's a hoard of 337 silver Roman coins that were discovered in a field, and these have been now declared as a treasure. These coins, believed to have been placed in the ground about AD 69 to 70, were found in Gaboan, uh, shop. Shopfishier, I think I've pronounced that correctly. Now look, initially there were only uh, 64 coins found close together before a team was sent out and the hoard recovered. Hoards of coins are amazingly rare in the country, an expert said. It is thought they are evidence of military activity in the area. 
At a recent inquest, a uh, coroner found the items to be treasure, and the coins were found during an organised event uh, by the Mould Historical Search Society with Darren Booth and fellow club members finding the first coins. The first uh, find, well, the find was first reported to the Shop, uh, Shopfordshire uh, Museums and the Portable Antiquities team, Scheme, who sent a team to recover the hoard. The Gumboan hoard will now be valued and made available for Shopshire Museums to save and put on display. Now look, next up again, we've got, uh, that's the stories for this week, guys. Um, look, next up, uh, we've got the Coffee Bush Kid again uh, coming on with a quick tip on the ProFind 35. G'day, folks. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and today we're going to talk about why you would reduce your sensitivity on your ProFind 35. We're going to do this in two parts, and the first part is in the park. Reducing the sensitivity on your pinpointer sounds very, very counterintuitive. But sometimes when you're in a park, you just really don't want to draw attention to yourself. So if you're only digging small targets close to the surface, you should be able to get away with it quite comfortably. If you don't want to draw attention to yourself in a park-like setting, uh, the thing to do is not take in big spades. Uh, what I would actually do is if you were determined to just go for like the one and two dollar coins and you don't want to dig very deep take a coin popper in or an old screwdriver as a lot of people do and that way you can retrieve the coins and hopefully they're just sitting on the surface or just down in the grass you'll retrieve the coins without digging big mounds or holes and they are nice and easy to fill in and I will tell you fill your bloody holes in we don't want to have bits and pieces lying out to give anyone an excuse to say, oh, they've made all this mess. It's far better to play the game of, well, you show me where I dug. Not only can you reduce the sensitivity on your pinpointer, what you might like to do too is actually reduce the sensitivity on your detector. Uh, it's no use having it up on 24, 25 on the likes of the Equinox, having really good ground penetration when when you've reduced the sensitivity on your pinpointer, you're only going down to probably two inches at maximum. It's no use trying to find those things. So it might help you to reduce temptation to reduce the sensitivity on your detector as well. But uh, we're gonna show you how to do this right now. So there's our ProFine 35, we'll switch it on. Little pip there at the end. What I usually like to do is find out exactly where I am with my sensitivity and you can change that by either the plus button or the minus button. You hear that long drawn out uh, beep there? That's telling me that I am on full sensitivity with that. So that's what we want now. And if we come down here onto the ground, we can see we've got a target there already. And you can see that by about now, the pinpoint is going off, there's our coin, but at that depth, that's, that's a deep hole when it comes to, to trying to get something out of the ground. So what I would do in a situation, and it might just be that you're in the park for an hour and you just want to have a, a good, nice, light time, I would reduce my sensitivity once, twice, that puts you on about number three, so you're right in the middle, and then what we can do is that you'll see that that's reduced it quite a bit. And you go, that's not a bad depth of hole to dig. You're not going to get much dirt or grass uh, piled up everywhere. It's not like you're digging a, digging a big hole for a deep target. It's just a small area and it's just, you know, there it is. That'll be fine to dig out. So my advice to you, is that if the target, hopefully being a coin, is deeper than that distance that we had there, just walk away from it. You don't have to dig everything that's in the park, just leave it as it is, no one's going to give you any grief. So on part two, we're going to do retrieving a target out in the field and why you would reduce the sensitivity there. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and this has been a quick tip for the Mind Lab Show.
Okay, well, look, this time we're back to uh, our uh, photo competition. No, we're back to our Gold Digger Dave's uh, pay dirt. So we're actually going to have a bit of a look here. I've got a little bit lost in uh, everything I'm doing. Uh, it's our product spotlight, and uh, we're going to look at this uh, in a little more detail. Australia's richest pay dirt has just got better and better as the value as the price of gold has continued to climb. Our exclusive mini patches in the pay dirt, bags, tubs and buckets give people a chance to get a real return on their investment with up to 30 grams of bonus gold in some uh, sizes. Now the mini patches have been spread throughout the pay dirt combinations and we've also been able to throw in uh, some uh, collectible redeemable tokens. So these tokens are real uh, gold plated, they're real silver plated and of course uh, bronze. So if you happen to discover one in your pay dirt, uh, then these are uh, you can trade them in for the following discounts on purchases. So if you get a gold token, you score 50 bucks off your next purchase over $100. A silver token, 25 off your uh, next 50, and uh, a bronze token, 10 bucks off every purchase. So gold to get a gourmet pay dirt. It's available in combo sizes with pans and panning kits, and uh, it's from one of the richest alluvial patches of gold in the world. As I've been saying, it's no ordinary pay dirt. Now look, don't forget Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt is also tonight's live viewer giveaway. So keep watching and see if you are tonight's lucky live viewer. So look, it's okay, it's time to come back once again with a new segment from the Coffee Bush Kid. And this time we're going to have and see what have I found. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today what have I found? Let's have a look, shall we? Well, this is today's little mystery item. They come up, oh, I probably find one every four to six months out detecting in the gold fields. And like with this one, you think to yourself, oh, that's a ring. But you'll notice that it's actually not round. It's sort of off-centrally oval. Yeah, you know, what the hell is it? And then you find them where they've got little luggy bits on them. And again, this one's a bit more deformed. You know, it took a while for us to figure out what they were. We thought that perhaps they were part of a scissor. And so we started looking at images online of scissors. And then all of a sudden we thought, oh, maybe they're strange enough to be a, uh, a pair of wick scissors that would actually cut the wick of a candle. So we had a look at that and that was when we found out what they were. And you occasionally find a piece like that. And you go, well, what the hell is it? I don't know still. Well, if you put your finger in there and there and do that, that is actually off a candlestick. So this is the well, the part that you would hold on to, there would be a dish around here that this was attached to, and you can see that that's got two rivets in there that has come loose. But that is actually what they are. They're the uh, holder for a candlestick that you would put your finger through. And they seem to break quite often. But they're always a great little find. I, I love finding them. I think they're, they're, they're a top thing to find. So there we have it. Today's little mystery item is a finger holder for a candlestick. Great little find. So, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and that's what I found. Okay, well, look, I think I might have done a segment twice or something there. I don't know. I lost a little bit of track of where I was going at the moment then. But, look, it's time now for me to answer our viewer questions. And uh, the first one this week comes from Stephen, who asks, G'day, Dave. Other than what you see on maps, how can you visually tell if an area is surfaced? Well, hi, Stephen. Uh, great question. One of the easiest ways to know if you're on a surface patch is to look at the type of ground that is showing through. For example, quite often around the central Victorian gold fields, and especially in the whipstick and areas like that around Castlemaine, those type of places, you're going to find that, uh, that the bare clay pan will be showing. Now look, the red clay pan is usually showing, it has very little vegetation growing on it. It's a great indication that the old timers have surfaced the area. 
So surfacing, just for anybody who wasn't sure, is where the old times, instead of digging down through the overburden and taking out the wash dirt, came in and just took the whole surface. It was so rich and so shallow, there was no point in digging down little holes everywhere. So the little vegetational growth uh, on any of these areas with the red clay is a great indication that it may well have been surfaced. The other way to give you an indication of whether there has been an area surfaced is by looking for an edge. And so edges come up to where it looks like natural ground. Instead of dropping off, it comes up to the natural ground uh, and you can see it looks like natural ground. Those edges were where the old miners stopped and it's where the ground returns to the original level. Now just because the old miners stopped at that point doesn't mean it isn't worth going a little further on. The old miners stopped because it wasn't payable for them at that point. It wasn't worth them using their water and they weren't getting enough grams per tub. Um, so I tend to like to wander around those areas. A lot of the time that I'm finding too, your surface patches are usually up on hillsides and things like that rather than in deep gullies. Now that's not always the case, but that's a, a, an idea if you see it up on a hillside, you've got an indication they may have been uh, surfacing the gravels that were up there uh, at that point. Now look, it's a little less of an indication in some areas due to the fact that some of the soils may have been disturbed for other reasons. So even if you find an edge, maybe it's a surface area, um, maybe it's not. Uh, it may have been used for gravel removal for uh, roadworks, etc. Of course, it always helps if you're looking in an area that has had previous alluvial workings. And if I'm walking around Bendigo, for example, and see uh, that slight depression where they've taken out some of the soil uh, and it looks like it's got an edge to it, well, I certainly uh, go and investigate those as though they were uh, a surface mined area. Well, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea and helps on your next hunt, but the red clay is definitely a great indication. Now, look, we've got a question also in tonight from Elliot who has asked, is it worth uh, trying to melt down fines or keep the gold whole? Look, another fantastic question there, and thanks for that, Elliot. My preference myself is to keep my gold in its natural state. I know some people prefer to amalgamate smaller bits into one lump and maybe that means you won't lose them and things like that. Um, but I'm also aware that there are some cash gold buyers who also prefer not to buy the melted gold due to the risk of uh, having uh, impurities and things like that in it. When any of the larger lumps or pieces that may be great for jewellery, it's a definite no-no to melt the gold. The nuggets are much better off as you're always melting them, is always going to melt away any premium that might be attached to larger nuggets. So I'm talking ones that might be nice for a pendant or uh, a very, very big in size. If you're only going to be sending the gold to the, the mint to be smelted, well then it probably doesn't make a lot of difference in either case. But like I said, I much prefer to leave my gold natural. And thanks again for the question, guys. Uh, much appreciated. Don't forget, if you have questions you would like me to have a crack at answering on uh, one of the shows, pop them into the feed or post it to our regular Saturday post asking for questions and I'll get you an answer on a future MindLab show. Look, uh, we've got this week's Gold Hotspot, and we're actually going to revisit one of the ones we've done a long while ago. Uh, and this week, we're heading off to uh, Castlemaine in central Victoria to see what we can discover there. This week's Gold Hotspot is Castlemaine. It's a wonderful historic town in Victoria, just 120 kilometres northwest of Melbourne. It has many gold fields within the Castlemaine Diggings National Heritage Park. Castlemaine began its life as the centre of Mount Alexander diggings in 1851. Within a year, the Mount Alexander goldfield extended south to Vaughan and Guildford and north to Barker's Creek. In its heyday, it boasted a population of over 30,000 and was known to millions around the globe. Castlemaine was a place for many to become rich, some of them incredibly so. In Melbourne, June, 25th, 1852, the Melbourne Morning Herald reported that a person named Fitzsimmons and his three mates arrived in Melbourne after being at the Mount Alexander diggings and had 299 pounds, four ounce weight of gold. They believed there was still a large quantity left in the hole, but had left because they had become fairly tired of the pursuit of picking up the gold. During the gold rush era, it was the richest alluvial gold field in the world. 
with much of the gold found within four metres of the surface. When you look around Castlemaine today, so many of the buildings and landmarks from the gold rush era still remain. Castlemaine has a fantastic array of eateries and accommodation, as well as a regular calendar of events. Drop in to the Visitor Information Centre or check them out online to see what else you can do whilst in Castlemaine. Well, that's almost it for another episode of the MyLab Show. And it's time to see who our lucky live viewers are. Look, congratulations goes out to on Facebook to Justin uh, Cremond, C-R-A-M, I think I've got that right. Cremond sounds correct. Uh, uh, hopefully we're right there, Justin. Uh, you've scored yourself a Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet pay dirt bag and a mini panning kit and on youtube charlie rick charlie congratulations you've scored yourself a panning kit or a mini panning kit and our uh, gold digger dave's gourmet pay dirt as well if you could let corey know your details in the feed and we'll get those kits away to you asap look remember it's easy to be a winner on the mind lab show all you have to do is watch all right, well, you're a winner if you're watching anyway, but if you drop your name into the feed and let us know you're there, you are in with a chance to win our regular weekly giveaway, and we give away some fantastic stuff here on Australia's favourite live stream for prospecting and treasure hunting. Good luck to all for next week's live viewer giveaway. Uh, before I go, um, thanks for watching and uh, let's have a look at what's coming up on next week's episode. We have a full wrap up on all the action from Rockarama, Palmer in South Australia. We're going to head out with me in another episode of Detecting with Dave. Of course, I'm going to answer your questions live and we'll give away some fantastic kit to give you an advantage when you next head out on your favourite gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventures. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den. Thanks for watching the Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Tune in next week for another episode of the Mine Lab Show.